Welcome to Make Something with me, David Petruto, and today we are going to make this two-door cabinet. We are going to make our own veneers to make this pattern front, and we're going to use a Corian top. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Check it. Today we are going to build a small two-door cabinet for our entryway. Typically, I would do this with walnut plywood because it's nice and wide and it's easy to work with. I thought I would challenge myself and build it mostly out of solid walnut except for the doors. And we'll get into the reason why later because we're going to do something very interesting with that. So I have a bunch of walnuts that is just rough. There are no straight edges. It's, it's wobbly. It, it needs jointed and planed. Most of these boards are too big for my joiner, so I have to use my joiner sled within my planer so we can get one side flat, get rid of the sled, and then plane down the other side. And then we need to use my straight edge jig on the table saw to get a straight edge before we can start ripping pieces. And then we gotta glue things together. So there's a lot of prep work before we can even really start assembling the cabinet. So when the boards are nice and flat, it goes together pretty good. So there's, there's not much sanding we'll have to do. This has been drying for about an hour. We can take it out of the clamps. And I've already got a straight edge on this one side so I can run this up against my fence and cut it to width and get rid of those beautiful ugly knots. So for the bottom piece of this cabinet, I'm Frankensteining one, two, three, four of these pieces together. It's not going to really be seen unless you open the cabinet and look at the bottom. So I don't care that the boards are all mismatched. It's, it's not going to be seen. This would have been a lot quicker and a lot easier and a lot faster if we would have used walnut plywood like I had originally planned. But I think the solid wood is definitely going to pay off. I like the way oil finish we are going to do a rabbit joint. So I need to cut a rabbit on the end pieces at the top and the bottom and at the top and the bottom. To make this rabbit here, we're going to just use a single blade here on the table saw and we're going to do it in two passes. We're going to make a cut this way and then we're going to flip the board upright with a jig and then make a second cut this way. Before I glue this up and add reinforcements, I am going to cut a rabbit along the back to hold the back panel. I can do this now, or I could do this later with a handheld router and then go all the way around and then I would have to chisel out the corners. But I want to do it now because I never feel comfortable taking a router to a piece that's already cut and glued. And there's just too, there's that chance that it might slip and then I ruin, I ruin the piece. So I want to put the odds in my favor and cut that rabbit now. We just did that with a single blade and it took three passes. Could have put a dado stack in there, done it in one pass, or could have done it on the router and a couple of passes, but I don't mind nudging the fence over a couple times too get that perfect depth. Got these corner pieces here to make sure everything goes together square. I want this to be as square as possible because that's going to make making the doors a lot easier on me. This might be a little difficult because my bench isn't quite wide enough to get everything on there. And Dan's got a film, so he can't help. So hopefully, hopefully this works. Dan, no matter what, no matter what I say, no matter what happens, do not put the camera down. Okay, Dan, I need your help. Said. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Right now, everything is, is square. Almost. The original plan was to do shiplap a back panel on here of maybe three or four pieces and then not glue the whole thing in just kind of nail it in in certain parts and then that shiplap would allow it to expand and contract 
But since I don't have a dadoed shelf in the middle, I want to give it a little bit more strength. So I'm going to use walnut plywood and we're going to glue it in the entire rabbit and that will give it a little bit of a little bit of strength. Not a lot, but enough. So we are gluing plywood, which does not move to solid wood, which does move. But the movement plays in our favor. The way this wood is going to expand and contract is going with the grain. So it's going to expand and contract this way and not, not this way. So I'm not worried about gluing in this entire panel. Just a couple more after this. Typically when I've built furniture like this before and use these rabbit joints, I would drill in from this side and add dowels. And sometimes I would use a contrasting dowel. Actually, I think I have a piece over here. Yeah, so this, we did the same thing with here. So we use a contrasting dowel that shows up there. And then same thing with the drawer front here. There's a video on that. So, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. And instead of going from this side, I want the dowel to be hidden. So I'm gonna come up from the top. And the top is not gonna be seen because this is going to get covered up and the bottom is not going to be seen because that's gonna get covered up. So we're gonna use a quarter inch dowel and then a quarter inch bit and drill in that deep. And gluing a dowel in there is going to reinforce that joint, make it really strong. And then we'll just flip it over and do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to use this 1 8 inch sheet metal and this 1 inch square tubing to make the feet. And while I'm doing that, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Let's say you're like me, you're a woodworker, a crafter, and a maker, and you want to share your experiences online, Squarespace is the place to go. Squarespace is constantly updating their templates, and they are designed by professionals. They are absolutely beautiful. My website, makesomething.com, is a Squarespace site, and my podcast website, makingitpodcast.com, is a Squarespace site. Image galleries are really easy to make. They are beautiful and user-friendly. And if you want to sell the items that you make, you can do that with Squarespace. You can sell both physical and digital items. I do that. I sell PDF plans and I sell books and t-shirts and all kinds of other merch. Squarespace makes that part of my life really easy. You can bring in all of your social media feeds so everything is in one central place. I've been using Squarespace for years, long before they were a sponsor, and I used to be a professional web developer, so I know the pains of making your own website. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about the back end of the code or any of that stuff. Squarespace. So visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. Now we're going to attach the feet. These aren't the right kind of screws for this, but it is what I have and it is a run what you brung situation. As you can see, I've already added finish to the cabinet. We'll talk about that later when we do the doors. I got these from McMaster Car and they just go into one inch square tubing. So you set them on there and you pound that in. This is a slab of walnut that I have and we're going to use this to make veneers, which might upset some live edge furniture people. I'm not a live edge furniture person. So the idea is uh, to glue up an almost like a chevron pattern. So we have the grain running this way on one door and then the grain running this way on another door. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna cut this down into 20 inch long pieces 
and then get one straight edge on here and then I can take that to the bandsaw and start making my veneers. The sapwood is going to play a part of the design. So this is, this is one of those cases where we want the sapwood. I have a straight line drawn on here and I want to cut this off at the table saw, but because this edge is all wonky, I'm going to temporarily hot glue it to this piece of plywood. And then this plywood will act as my straight edge against the fence so I can get a straight edge here. This is too wide for my jointer. So to get one side flat, I have it on this sled with some wedges in there so it doesn't wobble. I got this big massive bandsaw and I'm going to try to cut some veneers on here. Right now it's just a little bit over a quarter of an inch thick. We got this piece resawed, and now we gotta plane this down so this is flat again before we can get the next piece out of the bandsaw. It's a super long and boring process, but I think the payoff is going to be worth it. The next thing I need to do is, uh, I've got one clean side, so now I need to plane the other side, and I'll plane them all to the same thickness, and then we'll start playing with the patterns for the doors. I put some tape down on my bench and this is the size of one of the doors. So this would be the right door. And I'm going to have the veneers at an angle like this. And I need the tape to make sure I'm going to have enough material. And you can see it it covers up all of the tape. So I will glue these together like this to create this repeating pattern. And then book matched on the floor is the other door, the left door. And these are going, it's going to have like this chevron look. And so this is the top here. You can see that is book matched to that. I also have the square here to make sure they're indented the same amount. So that should give me the same angle on the other side. I'm not worried about getting any clamping pressure since this is going to get glued to a piece of plywood. So while these panels are drying, I'm gonna cut the piece of plywood that these are going to get glued to. So if that is the sheet of plywood, what I want to do, instead of doing walnut edge banding, I am going to kind of frame it in walnut pieces like that. It gives me some more options instead of just regular edge banding. I can glue this on there and then I can cut it to its final size over at the table saw and I'm cutting into walnut instead of into plywood. So we're taking the plywood that we cut and we're making a, a frame and I'm just gluing the edge on here. After I get the veneer on there, I can take this to the table saw and I can cut it to its final dimensions and I have a lot of play to work with. And I, this is just going to look better than edge banding. We will have to veneer the back as well. And I'm not going to do the angles. It's just going to be the, the veneer with the paper backing and it's just going to go on the back. And we're going to use contact cement. And the thing with contact cement is you put it on both pieces, you let both pieces dry, and then you put them together and it bonds instantly. It's been 20 minutes. There's, it's dry but tacky. And the great thing about this, no clamps, no vacuum bags. You just stick it on there. And wherever it sticks, it stays there forever. Or at least we hope.
I don't know if this is necessary. For the top, I have this piece of Corian. Normally you have to buy this in big sheets, but Kencraft has cutoffs. They've got some, some supplier who sells them their, their cutoffs and I grabbed a piece of that. And I have never worked with this before, but apparently it cuts just like wood. So you can use all your woodworking tools and your woodworking blades. Probably can't see it on camera, but one side is smoother than the other side. And you can just basically keep sanding it until you get the shine that you want. So I am just going to cut this up on the table saw to the right size. And then we're going to use some liquid nails to attach it to the top. Unfortunately, you can only get this in store at Cancraft. They don't sell this online because the sizes and all the pieces vary. I finished trimming up the doors. I added hinges. The hinges that I am using are frameless three quarter inch overlay hinges. I think they are soft close. And now I am adding finish. The finish that I'm using is just a simple wipe on poly. And I thin it down with mineral spirits. For the first coat, I brush it on. I let it sit for about five minutes and then I come and wipe it off. And then I wait 24 hours. And then I come back and I wipe it on, let it sit for a few minutes and then wipe it off. And then I repeat that once a day for four days. And on the final coat, instead of using the gloss, I use the satin because I don't want a glossy finish on my wood projects. And, but I want the first few coats to be crystal clear and then I can satin it up with the final coat. So yes, this finishing process is a long time. It takes four to five days but the payoff is worth it, especially when you thin it down and you wipe it on, it's flawless. You can't mess it up. Even, even though it's already a wipe on, I thin it down anyway because I want it to be flawless. I, I put a lot of time into this project and I wanna make sure that the finish comes out great. So I am adding two adjustable shelves. So I'm going to drill the holes and then put in the little shelf pins in there but I'm not going to drill a whole bunch of holes. I'm only going to drill enough holes for these two shelves. And then if we need to move them in the future, I will drill more. I'm not exactly sure what's going to go in the cabinet. So I did not want to put a permanent shelf in there. And I don't want to drill a bunch of holes until I figure out what is actually going to go in there. If I was watching this video, I would probably question the stability of that case without a dadoed shelf in there. Believe me, it is super sturdy. Those rabbited reinforced joints are super strong. It's, 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 it's solid as a rock and I'm not going to drive a car over it. So I am not worried about the stability at all. If you are looking for hardwood, such as beautiful walnut, check out my friends at KenCraftCompany.com. The hinges also came from KenCraft and the Corian came from KenCraft. So check them out. They are really good friends of mine. They are located here in Toledo, Ohio, but they do sell hardwood online. Thank you for watching. That is going to wrap it up. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.